Hey guys, Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. I'm here with another video series. This one I love because what I'm doing is I'm taking your questions and I'm creating content around those questions. This way I get to answer your guys' questions for you, uh, almost face to face, uh, we'll pretend. And, uh, and I know, so I know I'm reaching you guys and what you're looking to get out of these videos and also it helps me uh, with creating content because we're posting so many videos. So uh, I have a question that was submitted. Really excited to answer that question and do this haircut for you and with you guys. And also, uh, if you guys wanna submit questions to our channel, you can post them in the comments below. After you hit subscribe, make sure you do that. After you hit share and share it with your friends. But then after that, post your questions in the comments. Also, you can go on our Instagram, our Facebook, our Twitter, uh, anything else, use the hashtag free salon education, ask your questions and we'll get to them. I have tons and tons of questions lined up to create videos around. So let's not stall any longer. Let's get started. Here's the question. Jen asked, I get a massive amount of the Julianne Huff style cut requests, the popular long choppy bob. Jennifer Lawrence also has this type of cut. Sometimes I'll razor it depending on the weight. I'd love to see your take on it with shears. Love all you guys, Jen. All right, Jen, so I'm psyched to do this haircut because this haircut was actually, um, I saw Julianne Huff on TV recently, uh, just last week, and I, I do like the style of the haircut. Um, so I wanna show you guys what we did, because um, I've already done the cut. I like to do the cut first, then we break it down a little bit. Um, so the cut is here. Now, what I love about the cut, and there's a little bit of difference, I'm gonna tell you what that is. First off, I put a lot of thought into this haircut. You could just use a razor and get it done in two seconds, but I like to have structure and we always look for longevity in haircuts, not just to shatter them up uh, and send them out the door. I want my clients to um, have their haircuts last a lot longer. So uh, when you look at this haircut, there is a lot of structure built into it. We're gonna break it down step by step. Uh, what I like about Julianne Huff's haircut, the Kardashian girl's haircut, sorry, I don't know their names. Um, I don't know which one it is. I have to clarify that, but it's a very strong baseline. So I love that it's, uh, it, it's shattered, it's layered through, throughout the, the cut, but the baseline is very solid and cut very square. So um, Julianne Huff has it a little bit longer than this, um, but with a mannequin, I like to just bring it up a bit just to have a little more structure. Uh, and the Kardashian girl is a little bit uh, further down as well, uh, but I like that the shape kind of expands out we used a wand to curl it up. You're gonna see all of that in this step-by-step. -step. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like this video, post it and share it with all of your friends. Uh, we'd love to do that. And I hope you guys enjoy this haircut and the style because this is something that's definitely salon friendly and you can use a ton. So let's get started. I just turned her. Uh, let's get started. Hope you guys enjoy the haircut. Let me know in the comments, thanks. All right, so I wanted to start off by sharing with you the mannequin that I use. This is the Pivot Point Erica mannequin. It's a solid mannequin, which means that the hair on the top is longer than the hair on the bottom. So you get a nice fresh start to your haircut. You're not starting with a layered mannequin already. A lot of mannequins um, are put together with the same length of hair throughout. So I, I like to start with this one. Also, the great thing about Pivot Point mannequins is that they're SAI compliant, which is the Social Accountability International Organization. And basically what they do is they, uh, th they're the international labor standard that helps to protect workers along every step of the supply chain. So making sure that uh, the companies are held accountable for who's putting together the mannequin heads. All right, so let's break down the sectioning. We're gonna go parietal ridge uh, directly back. So uh, top edge of the eyebrow, uh, parietal ridge, find that round of the head, and uh, you're gonna bring it back to a point, which I'll show you in a second. Then you're gonna take that point and you're gonna draw it right down to uh, slightly behind the ear on both sides. Uh, and this is gonna be a better view right here. Um, this is the point in the back. The, that's in the center of the crown. So if you, if you can picture that, makes it a lot easier. So just bring that point to the center crown and then bring it down to behind the ear. Now I went through and forgot to hit record uh, to show you how I cut the baseline. So there's a little mimic, uh, real simple, just went through uh, blunt one, just combed all the hair down and cut it because now I'm gonna go through and layer it so I don't need um, to go through and section that a bunch uh, and take a lot of small partings and just cut it off. Now, we've got our fresh start sitting uh, the hair sitting just below the neck 
of the mannequin. Uh, now I'm going to draw a line right along the occipital bone. Um, slightly, I'm going to say slightly above it, but not really. It's, it's pretty much riding the occipital bone. And the reason for that is that's going to be the heaviest point of the base of the haircut. So if you think about how the head is curving up, which we talk about all the time, um, that's where I want to take my guideline from. So I section right at the occipital bone. I clip that off. And now I'm taking vertical sections straight out from the head. Uh, and as I move along the back, I'm going to be uh, over directing to the previous. So bringing the hair straight back, cutting more of a squared off shape in the back of the head. Uh, so if you th think about this horizontally, um, this would be pretty much a straight line in the back. Um, so vertically, you're just bringing it straight back. I like cutting this vertical, obviously, because uh, we're working with the elevation. Um, a nice and high elevation with this, pretty much straight out from the head. Our top angle uh, that's sitting on the curve of the head there is probably about a zero, but then we're about 90 degrees throughout the rest as it gets lower. Uh, so we're removing weight, but we're not removing too much is really the, the key to this. It's keeping the haircut heavy because like you saw in the, the pictures at the beginning, we want a nice light airy haircut, but we don't want it to be too layered uh, to where you know, it's, it just looks moldy or something like that. I guess that's the easiest way to, to describe it. Now, you're going to notice that her head is tilt back now. Uh, so if you rewind it and you look at how I was cutting it before, her head was tilted forward. A lot of people think that tilting the head affects the haircut. It does because it affects how your body position works. So now that I'm cutting with my fingers down, I tilt her head slightly back, so that makes me comfortable, so I can be more consistent with her haircut. Um, the other thing is, when I get to the corner right around the ear, I like to bring that hair more out just a little bit, just to round that edge off uh, to not square it so much. So then I went through, and I'm checking it horizontally to see that line. You can see that slight curve. That's because I, I rounded the corner a bit um, at the very last section. Now, elevation is as high as possible uh, in this part of the haircut. Slightly, my finger angle is slightly tilted forward towards the head, uh, so more of a diagonal forward feel. Uh, that's the same, I'm doing it parallel with the sectioning, so every parting that I take in this part of the haircut is also diagonal forward, and I just work my way through the haircut that way. Stationary guide, bringing everything to the same exact spot making sure I comb all those little bits of hair. Now, that removes the weight from the haircut, but it doesn't uh, finalize the line. It pushes, basically if I hold all the hair way up in the air, it's gonna push all of the weight down to the bottom. So now that I've got this heavy weight at the bottom, I go through and I cut a nice horizontal square line, and that gives me the heaviness uh, of that strong line that you see in those haircuts, which I love, and then it still gives me the light layers through the top. So sometimes, we're not always trying to cut everything at once. I'm elevating everything up to take out the layer or to, to do the layering and take out the weight from the top of the haircut and then shoving the weight down to the bottom of the haircut. And then I cut my nice horizontal line uh, to give a strong base to this haircut. And that's what I love about doing this haircut with a scissor uh, as opposed to a razor because if I did it with a razor, it would be more broken on the bottom. And I like that kind of thick feel to the, to the base of the haircut. Now we take out the top, real simple, combing it all forward, and then I'm gonna do a center parting. I like to clip off what I'm not working with. It just keeps me more organized. Uh, it's definitely cleaner on video as well. It uh, doesn't mean that you have to clip it off, but for me it works. Um, I'm testing my guide, because that's what I'm cutting first, uh, so I, bring my finger down to her chin, that's where I want it to sit, and then I cut. I'm standing on the opposite side of her head, so I'm over directing everything across her forehead to myself. And I'll cut it a couple times just to make sure I got a nice solid line um, with where I want, and then I'll drop it to make sure it's the length that I want it. Then I just take another diagonal forward section and bring it over to me. The great thing about this, cutting the top last, is that I already cut the sides. And because I already cut the sides, they're already the length that I want them. So you can see that they start to fall out. 
uh, which is great because I wanted to keep the base of the haircut standard. Then as I bring the top over and I cut those shorter layers, that's going to give me a nice pop to the top. But every time I take a section and I keep bringing it over to myself, uh, what's happening is it's making the hair longer in the back because I'm over-directing it further towards me. So the, the more I over-direct it, the more I pull it towards myself, the better, uh, the longer it gets in the back. So it still gives a lot of length in the back, but a nice short layers in the front. Uh, it gives a lot of movement. When you go in with that wand later, you'll see how it affects that. We take a piece from what we cut before as our guideline, and then we do the same thing, over-directing it towards us and cutting. Now you'll see I, I went over that a few times. The reason for that is to make sure that line is nice and crisp uh, because the better the lines are in a haircut, the better the shape is going to be in the end result, the more success your client will have, and uh, and then they're going to have to come back to get that adjusted. I think a lot of times when clients aren't coming back very often for haircuts, the reason is because they don't need to because their hair was already shattered when they left the salon. If you build structure in a haircut, they have to come back and maintain it because it was working for them, and they want it to keep working. Uh, here we go, Bricado Mousse. I love this mousse. Uh, I've said it in the last video that I did. Um, just makes it really easy to work with the hair. It's not heavy. It's not sticky. Uh, it's got a great hold. Going through with our Ergo blow dryer. Blow drying with my hands. And the reason I'm doing that is because um, with this style, it's a very free look looking style. It's not all about trying to really polish it, uh, polish it out. And I'm brushing all of the hair back. You wouldn't typically see me do this if I was going to do dry cutting. Um, a little bit of Bricado hairspray, but because I'm uh, because I'm using the wand, I like to blow dry the hair back, give it volume. I did go in with a paddle brush at the very end just to give it a little bit of polish because uh, hand dry isn't usually you know good enough. And then I go through with the wand and I'm curling everything back. And I'm just doing this really fast. I mean, obviously this is in fast forward as well, but I'm going through just picking up pieces about let's say a half an inch. Uh, in diameter, I'm just grabbing a little circle of hair, and then that's what I do as I go through. And I just keep curling everything back, and then we're going to go through and break it up at the end. A um, little trick is when you're on the opposite side, just uh, you want to stay consistent with how you're doing it. So um, my arm's going up, I'm elevating my elbow up, and uh, holding the iron down to allow me to wrap it around. You'll see that I go tight around the the tighter part so this iron gets skinny it starts skinny and gets wider towards the end um, the reason that I like this type of iron uh, rather than the one that starts fatter and gets skinnier is that I like to start the base nice and tight with a curl and then keep the ends a little bit straighter uh, you'll notice that that's really the big difference between whether you're using a curling iron or not um, is that you get that tight base and then it straightens out towards the end all right, so this is the finished result, just adding a little bit of Bricado medium hold hairspray, just lifting the hair, airing it out, and creating the style. I, I hope you guys love this haircut. Please uh, share it with your friends. Uh, this is something that you can definitely use in the salon over and over again. Hit that subscribe button and uh, post those requests, whatever haircuts you'd like to see. Please